Well, the New Orleans Police Department has been under federal oversight for almost a decade. Right now, they are working on being released from the consent decree by implementing new policies. This morning, we're joined by former New Orleans Police Chief Ronald Serpas, who was over the department when that consent decree was put in place in 2012. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for calling. Yeah, let's start all the way from the beginning of this. Why the consent decree was put into place in the first place. It was desperately needed. People had lost complete confidence in the police department after Katrina. And it's important to note the police department had been given an all green lit sign of approval by the by the federal government in 2004 for a consent decree investigation where the NOPD and the federal government agreed on changes. So between 2005 and 2010, the department went out of being constitutionally expected to perform to unconstitutionally expected. Secondly, uh, consent decrees provide a tremendous amount of funding that sometimes cities can't provide, won't provide, or fail to provide. So in our case in 2010, we needed the consent decree to do a couple of simple things. We need to regain the faith and confidence of the people of the city. We needed to regain the faith and confidence of the officers that they could perform and perform well. And we needed the help of a federal judge to ensure that when we needed training money, promotion money, equipment money, money for investigations, money for the cost that it takes to make a department better, the judge could order the city to do so. Uh, and here we are today, 10 years later, still struggling with recruitment and retention, which has been an abysmal failure since 2011. Um, remains to be seen what's going to happen today. Yeah, you talked about some of the positives there of a department being under a federal consent decree, getting resources that the department otherwise wouldn't get. What were some of the downsides? Uh, some of the downsides was just the execution and messaging, right? You're going to make some significant changes in policies related to training, promotion, accountability. And it takes a while to message those things. And I think by the time we left, the consent decree was in effect for about 18 months, and we were making some headway. I think Chief Harrison made some headway, and I think Chief Ferguson made some headway. But what really destroys the NOPD's ability to be successful in the consent decree, and the judge made a point of this last time, is if you built a department to be 12, 1300, and you're only 900, what are you not doing that needs to be done to ensure the consent decree is being followed? That will likely continue to be a key issue. Interesting. So, of course, yes, Mayor Cantrell has petitioned for the consent decree to end. There are some police reformers who say they want to see it continue. In your opinion, is it time for the NOPD to be released from the consent decree? No, absolutely mm. not. You cannot perform the functions outlined in the consent decree with a department that's about a third understaffed of what you said you needed to be 1,200 people. So I don't think it's going to happen. And Mayor Cantrell, quite honestly, is not original here at all. The Baltimore City recently tried to get out of their consent decree. The judge told them no. Um, this is just not going to be done because of a political will or a concern about the optics of a consent decree. I have full faith and confidence in Judge Morgan, and I cannot imagine that Judge Morgan is going to turn back 10 years of growth and success uh, to meet a political agenda inside the New Orleans political environment. The people of New Orleans and the officers need this consent decree to continue to allow them to grow and be successful and solve crimes. All right, so even though it's been 10 years, you're saying it should continue. And it's been interesting. I was kind of looking into the history of some of the cities who have been under federal consent decrees, and some of them have lasted many, many years, which I found one article saying that originally, I think the plan for our consent decree, we thought we could accomplish what needed to be accomplished in about four years. So, of course, it's gone much beyond that. You know, it's the key, one of the key reasons it's gone so long here is the city made a decision in 2011 to effectively stop funding recruitment and retention as a political strategy of importance. Let them tell you about the money that put in the budget. That's meaningless. It was the political strategy for the last 11 years to defund the police department. And I don't mean that in the political common day sense of the word defund. Mm -hmm. What it meant was is they were going to shrink the size of the footprint. Mayor Landry did it. We disagreed. Other things we agreed on. Mayor Cantrell continued the same thing. Mayor Cantrell voted for, for shrinking the police department's recruitment and retention efforts when she was on the council, did so again as mayor. Council member Hereno, council member Jerusa, the two remaining members, they continued to vote with the political willingness, the political issue of not making recruitment and retention the number one issue. I'm still holding out hope for Oliver Thomas. He was here in the 90s when we had a huge crime wave and he helped us immensely on the council. Maybe he can bring some history. Maybe Oliver can bring some experience. Maybe Allah can bring some common sense to what it takes to make New Orleans the safest city in the big city in America, which it has been before, and it can be again. And that is the goal safety. All right, former NOPD Chief Ronald Serpas joining us with insight as the federal consent decree meetings continue to take place. Thank you for being with us this morning.
Good morning. Have a great day. All right. And guys, there is a community meeting where you can weigh in on the NOPD and the consent decree efforts. We'll have more information on that coming up. But first, let's get over to Peyton.